Hi and um, welcome, welcome to Yoga Solutions um, podcast with uh, me, Mark J. Aquaviva. So uh, yes, today's Yoga Solutions is going to be a little different than usual. Um, it's because I'm daring to extend my the framework of my teaching to in in other directions, in broader directions. It, it's something I've been reluctant to do, um, well, forever really, ever since I started teaching. Uh, I mean, my, my experience of practice is that it um, is uh, an incredible tool for investigating my own life, you know, how I relate to this world, the, the, how I relate to ideas like support and the space I occupy, um, how I relate to the world, because I found that solutions to complications in my movement and, and support uh, come from my relationships to those things. You know, if I don't feel supported, I'll hold myself away from the ground. I'll hold myself up. If I feel supported, um, then I won't need to. But in order to feel supported, I need to relate to my support in a way that allows me to uh, feel it. You know, if, if you're... Um, you're hov if you're sitting in a seat but you're hovering forwards, you're not receiving the support. You're not, and the thing that would hold you forwards is an absence of trust that that the back of that seat will support you. Perhaps, you know, if you want to find support, you have to do something to meet it, and um, that's kind of the the basis of a lot of my teaching. Is is if you if you want to have the yoga experience, then rather than going cross-eyed and, and to look inwards to see how various muscles are holding you up and all the rest of it, you need to look to your relationships with the world around you. Um, and that, that's the most practical way of working out how the, the best way that the body can, can function. And um, it, it yields very good results, you know. Um, so, uh, so that's been the foundation of my teaching, has, has been around Kind of pragmatic ways of changing how you practice. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is the the thing that I teach is different. Um, and th that being said, it's it's still very much in alignment with principles and philosophies that are out there. Mm -hmm. Because of my uh, desire not to uh, place myself in the kind of woo woo camp, I, I've always tried to make sense of things. I've always tried to make pragmatic sense of the basis of my intentions and instructions. Um, perhaps to make it available to people that don't experience or feel energetics. Uh, and, and also the, the problem with Focusing on energetics is if they're not embodied, if you if you don't directly physically engage with them, then it's it's um, very it very easily drifts into the territory of imaginings. You know, it's actually one of the potentially sutras. It, uh, it talks about movements of the mind that can mis mislead you, and one of those movements is uh, I can't remember what they what the actual terminology was, but it's basically um, flights of fantasy. You know, if you, you can imagine anything you like, and just because you imagine it, it becomes a potential reality in your experience. So, um, yeah, I, I've been in avoidance of that pit, particular pitfall for most of my teaching career. But um, it's becoming more and more undeniable. I mean, and and I'm, I'm getting to the stage where I kind of make, it kind of makes sense to me. So I'm, I'm going to offer something a little bit different today. Um, it will involve physical engagement, but it's to do with dealing with the mind, I guess. And perhaps that's what energetics are for. I don't know. So, where to start? I, I'm going to share you uh, share with you a little pranayama I did. It's a retention breath, 
Uh, I've been, I did it on my New Year's Eve morning workshop um, and it went down so well, it inspired me to begin to come up with an idea for a, uh, a next level pranayama course that is around breath retention and, and kind of directiveness of it, how, how you can use it to deal with yourself, to deal with uh, habitual um, thought loops that are kind of restricting you. And I'm talking about myself as well. It's what I practice. I practice it every day as a, as a way to start the day um, because it, I've noticed every time I do it, I generally have a good day. <laughs> and whenever I don't, I fall into patterns that are more complicated, that are harder to deal with. And um, so uh, I thought it was time to, to no longer keep it to myself. So I thought I'd share it with you on, on, on Facebook and anywhere else, maybe YouTube as well. I'll see where it goes. But um, yes, it's, it's a little bit brave of me. It's not my, um, what's the word? Comfort zone, it's outside of my comfort zone. But I, uh, I thought I'd share it with you because I'm starting to get a handle on how it actually works. So here's a, here's a little bit of background to it. It's to do with the breath. On a very practical level, the, the way that we breathe is a function of what we are doing, but also of how we feel. When you feel happy, you have a breath that goes with celebration. You have a, the way you breathe is in a particular way to do with a posture that describes being physically happy. Yeah? Uh, you can be happy without that physical uh, manifestation of it, and that happens when you're tired and old, and you no longer have the energy to express. But a happy breath has a quality to it, and you can look at the practical contents of how that breath works, or you can recreate feeling happy as you breathe and there'll be types you know ways that you breathe you'll notice it more across your heart you'll, you'll notice that there's more of a lift and if you when you release the breath if you let go into happiness you'll stay put and the release of the breath will support you in that more open posture same can be true for um, being being low if you feel sad and heavy and your breath will go with that and you'll have a physical posture that um, reflects how you feel, okay? So uh, the breath is a description of how you feel. And if you just followed what I invited you to do with the, you know, breathing as if you're happy, you may no, you may have noticed that doing so kind of changes how you feel. You know, even if you started watching this and you're a little bit heavy and a little bit tired and a little bit down, um, if you were intent on, if you stayed there then, and didn't follow the practice, then obviously nothing changed. But if you engage with it, breathing as if happy, when you release the breath and intend to release into the same kind of setup, you will feel different at the end of it. So I can extrapolate that. Breath, in yoga terms, um, it's not prana itself, but the breath that you take is kind of the conduit for you to receive prana. Prana is perhaps equivalent to chi in Tai Chi, Tai Chi Gong. Um, that's not the right terminology. Uh, tai, tai Chi, oh, it doesn't matter. It's the, it, in the Chinese, um, uh, Chinese energetic terms, chi is kind of life force, uh, I guess. Um, 
prana is the same kind of deal. And the breath uh, is the vehicle for how you receive this prana. It's one of the vehicles. So what can we do with this information? Well, if, if breathing happy changes your mood, then, and you have some sort of involvement in, in how, how you breathe, you can influence how you feel by the way you breathe. Then you can also influence the kind of your energy by infusing, which is exactly what you just did, if you follow my intention. You infuse the air that you are breathing with the energy of the thing that you want to experience. And that kind of makes a bit of sense to me it, because it involves your intent. You are the one doing the breathing. And there are sort of practical concerns in, in terms of uh, if you can kind of relax into that breath, then when you relax into the release of the breath, you will be organized in a way that will allow you to stay where you are as you let go. That's kind of uh, behind a lot of my instructions. So I'm, there's a lot of waffle at the moment, I'm, but I'm trying to I'm trying to bring a kind of realism to the 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 this energetic work because it will help it'll help you engage appropriately rather than just imagine. Okay, so. This is what I did at my workshop. It, it's a small part of it. Um, but I, what I'd like you to do is to follow my instructions now. So the, the first thing is to be sitting comfortably. And, um, you know, the way you cross your legs will determine whether your knees are sore or, you know, if you're too heavy in your, in your back or whatever. So I, I like to sort of use each foot as a prop just underneath the knee. So if I can get, if I can get um, this heel to, or this ankle to be a prop for this leg, and then I can pop the foot underneath in place so that that could be a prop for this leg, just below, just beyond the knees, then that, that makes a nice sort of symmetry. And if you rest your hands on that, you'll be able to let go of your back and still have some sort of space uh, in your hips. If, if your belly is heavy and hanging forwards, you can lean away from it, uh, lean away from one side as, as your sort of hip floats, but you sort of relax or create space on that side before releasing the breath and re-arriving with more space between you and your leg. You can do the same on the other side, lean away from it, try and leave it behind. Have a breath with developing space between you and that leg. And then as you release the breath, the ribs will come down and you can let your sit bone come down with the ribs. And you should have a bit more space between you, you and your legs. So that's a, a, sit, a sitting tip. Now, for this pranayama, we need to uh, spend a moment in three dimensions exploring how the breath can support us in all those dimensions. So first of all, if you, if you relax your back and rest down a bit, but I'd like you to take a breath and hold it. And when you, when you hold that breath, you close your throat and you kind of relax into it. But as you relax, I'd like you to imagine that the breath is in the space behind you. The held breath is in the space behind you and your job is to work out how to rest into it. And if it, it, it will probably at least you get a sense of it in your lower half as you hold the breath. And by the way, I'm talking too long. So let go of the breath and do it again anytime you need to. So you hold the breath and you kind of rest into the space behind you. Now you will find that your belly muscles work and your chest works. Try and not make your groins work. 
if you if you want to find support from the space behind your neck you might need to take a bit more breath so that you float on that breath and then the other thing that will help you find a sense of support behind is by bearing down holding the breath using it for support by bearing down with the chest so you hold the breath and then bear down against your ground and you might find that that gives you the opportunity to rest back and up a bit more. Then having done that, let go of the breath and imagine that it kind of leans into you, it empties into you from behind. So that you get an upright response from letting go of the breath. So uh, that seemed quite complicated. So do it one more time. Just imagine that there's a cushion behind you that you want to lean into as you breathe. Hold the breath for a moment and balance. Whilst you hold the breath, you're, you're trying to rest your weight down, but balance upright. And then when you've got that balance and you let go of the breath, imagine that the breath behind you dissolves into you. So you receive the prana. You receive the energy of the breath that was sitting behind you. And that should allow you to release forwards and up. Okay? We'll make it more casual now. Um, take a breath, hold it, but uh, as if breathing into the left-hand side. And you hold the breath, you kind of rest your body whilst you retain the breath and lean, which might take a bit of activity, lean into that space until the whole of you on the left-hand side feels like it's supported. And when you release the breath, you let it dissolve into you and relax back into yourself. And to the right, hold, balance, lean, and then when you feel like you're floating, you let the breath go and let it dissolve into you. You come back to the middle. One in front. So your, your, your back will arch a bit, but if you're leaning on your hands, it shouldn't be effortful. Can you find a breath that you can lean into in the front in front of you? all the way up to your face. And then when you let it go, you let it fall back into you. So that takes care of your kind of horizontal plane, everything around you um, in a coronal plane. So now what I'd like you to do is take a breath and when whilst you're holding it, see if you can find a sense of support behind, to either side and in front during the holding of the breath. And then when you've got that and you're in the middle, floating, notice up and down before you let go. Okay, so take a breath. Check you can lean into the behind you as you relax. Check you can lean into the left and relax. Check you can lean to the right and relax. Take a bit more of breath if you need it. Check, you can lean forwards and relax, and then come back to the middle, and let go. That's the kind of practical um, awareness of the space all around you. So now I'm gonna simplify into a kind of energetic pattern. So, generally being in the middle of things, with weight roughly evenly distributed throughout your base, which includes your hands, by the way. I'd like you to let go to breathe. So you'll drop. The breath will come in. And whilst you're holding the breath, I'd like you to bear down a bit. I'd like you to squeeze it so it can support you. But what you're doing is you're trying to build kind of a sphere of support around you. So it's like holding the breath and bearing down like you're going to, like you're trying to fart. <laughs> but that will allow you to float in the middle of the, a kind of a spherical space that is, that is all around you, about arm distance away. And if you've got that image, 
and the, the image of the breath filling that space, when, when you let go, you let go inwards from all directions, as if the breath that was all around you comes in to your center. Do it again. Hold the breath passively to start with, to find balance, and then bear down to find more up-down relationship. And that can help you expand your sphere to below the ground and above your head. And you want to be floating in the middle of that so that when you release the breath, you can imagine the contents of your sphere dissolving into you evenly from all directions. Okay. Next one, do the same thing. When you squeeze it enough to create a perfect sphere all around you, including beyond the ground and beyond the top of your head, I'd like you to add a little more of a squeeze, probably from your belly muscles, to get it up into your space in the center of your head. Make sure that the head can balance over what you're doing before letting go. And when you let go, as well as everything dissolving into you, you also allow something to drop down from the center of your head through you, through to your heart. few of those. Relax to breathe. If, you, if, you li if you're holding yourself up to breathe, it sort of uh, interferes with the process. You need to let go of everything so you can breathe. Close the throat so you can balance with that breath, that held breath, and then work with the core and ribs, bearing down, bearing in, gathering in and bearing down to float your, yourself in space. You might want to take incrementally more air into the body as you build this, because you're building a sphere around you. And you want to include a bit of squeezing to guide a sense of pressure or something, guide it into your, the center of your head. And that being the center of your gravity, when you let go, everything dissolves into you from all directions and it falls down from the third eye into your heart. Now, if you can get practiced at that without too much complication, if it can be done in a single held breath, <sighs> then what you can do is add something. You can add an intention. So like I say, the, you know, the energy that you infuse the breath with, if it's a happiness breath, for example, is the thing that you kind of give yourself. And by and this is my kind of uh, making sense of it part. Um, the, the action of getting the breath to support you in a sphere-like fashion outside of yourself um, gets you to work to support yourself. But... Um, it, it brings you into a balance, a structural balance that is centered in the spine behind the heart. Getting a sense of centering that held breath in the third eye with the head balanced over the heart and the rest of the body, and the only effort is your breathing gear. My feeling is that it's kind of, well, if you add no program, if you add no intention to it, it simply quietens the mind. Uh, I expect you're feeling that if you've done followed me so far. But if you want to inject something, you can inject some programming, if you like, by infusing your sphere and the place that you hold the breath in, in your center of your head, with intention, with something that you wish to be, to feel, to offer, whatever you like. And me being me, um, I think the simplest and most universal quality to infuse that breath with is love. 
So, and you don't have to feel that love in the moment. All you have to do is intend. All you have to do is write the word in the space. All you have to do is see the color. All you have to do is experience the vibration of it, the quality of it, as you hold the breath in the space all around you and in the center of your head. And then when you let go, you let go into receiving from all directions towards your center and you let go from your third eye into your heart. And my direct personal experience is that that action and intention seems to shift something. It seems to do something to my programming, my, the way the brain is programmed. Um, and it's not a, it's not a favorite word of mine because I, I balk at the idea of being controlled by such things. But um, I prefer to say, for myself, I prefer to think of it as kind of eliminating anything that gets in the way of the thing that I know that I want. So let's try it one more time. You take a breath by relaxing, filling your boots, you close your throat so you can rest into it and find balance and then you engage with that held breath, taking more if you need it to find the space all around you, your sphere and the third eye, center of the head, balanced physically at the center. As you work quite firmly with your breathing gear to support this, and as you're holding the breath, creating this bubble within and without, see if you can find a way of infusing that bubble with the color of love, with the, with the meaning of love, with the energy of it. And by default, that energy that you're creating around you is also being compressed into your third eye as you balance. And when you let go, let the energy of the breath, the prana, dissolve into you from all directions, leaving you physically rested outwards into that sphere as the, the brightness in the middle of your third eye dissolves and drops down to your heart. So there was much talking that time. Do it two more times. Remember to relax to breathe. And then engage wholeheartedly to, to organize the breath into a sphere and a point in your third eye that you're still relaxing into, but it involves effort in your core and your breathing gear. Infuse the whole thing with the quality you're looking for and then let go to receive it. And one more time, but this time something you want, whatever it is. You know what to do. You, you get to the physical situation where you're supported and floating and you with your breathing gear, you can influence the quality of that breath that you are holding within and without. It's effort to, from the breathing gear itself to organize yourself thus. The point is to set you up to receive it in an effortless fashion. Into the heart. So, um, <laughs> that was, um, yeah, I, I, I feel quite nervous in, in putting this out because it's not my usual territory. So I would welcome um, gentle feedback. <laughs> 
if you enjoyed it let me know if you want more of it let me know because um i will need encouragement to be persuaded to do this more um I, uh, there is so much practicality behind the energetic practice and um, I'm, I'm quite inspired to put on a, a course, um, a proper deep level course for, for people if they're interested in all the details, if, if they're interested in each part of it because it's not just holding the breath and balancing it. So, you know, there's aspects of it where every part of your body needs to feel that support. And um, if there is residual tension, you'll be holding yourself back from the experience. So, um, and that, that's to do with all of your chakras. It, it can go very, very deep. And I want to, I'm, I'm kind of inspired to put on a course that covers all of those things. So if, if, um, if you found value and you enjoyed it, let me know, please. I don't think I'll be sharing this all over Facebook. It'll leave me a bit exposed to, um, to um, well, it'll just leave me a bit too exposed to my liking. So I'll leave it on my group for a bit. And before I put it on up on the website for my um, premium members, um, but do let me know how the, how this went for you and whether you would like to have more of it. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Uh, do join me for a Saturday workshop. They're, they're running most Saturdays uh, throughout the year. I think there's one next weekend. Um, yeah, come and work with me one uh, in person. On, on, on a workshop or one-to-one -one, or you can always book a free 15-minute session with me to, um, to chat and let me know what's going on for you and see if I can help, okay? Alrighty, uh, that'll do from me. Um, I'll see you soon. Much love. Bye now.